Up until now, we've been stubbing out our backend in tests with cy.fixture and cy.route. But in order to do full end-to-end -end tests, we're going to want to start seeding our database. So let's write a Cypress task that seeds the database. And we can call the task dbseed. And that'll take an argument of a hash whose keys are the names of our models. So todos is our first model right now. We can pass an array of to-dos, but in the future we could add a users model and pass an array of users or any other models we might think of. But for right now we just have to-dos, so we'll pass an array of hashes. And in fact, we can just copy in the data from our fixtures file and paste that in. So now that we know what our task will look like, Let's go ahead and define it in Cypress plugins index, where we defined our hello world task. So this task is called db seed, and it takes an argument, which is our seeds. We'll assume that there's going to be some kind of a default case. So the default seed would be an empty to do's array. And that's just us resetting the database to a clean, empty state. And then we're either going to use the seeds if they were passed in or the default seed. So we'll say the seeds to use is if the seeds are present, then the seeds. Otherwise, the default seed. And then we're going to write a library. We'll probably call it db. And we'll import that, and we'll say that it has a seed method. We'll pass it in the seeds to use. And then we return null, remembering that null is the case where the plugin is used successfully. And so then we need to import our db library. So we'll say const db equals require, and this will be relative to our path. So go up to, I think. So we have Cypress plugins. Yep. So if we want it to be in our root to this, so we'll call it db cedar. So now we have to write our db cedar. So we'll create a new file, call it db cedar. And for this project, we use the low db library. So I'm just going to copy in some boilerplate for writing to that particular database. If you happen to use Postgres or MySQL, You'll have your own version of this code. So here's our module. And we had a seed function that takes some state. That's the seeds that we passed in in the plugin. And so this library just writes to a JSON file, which is located at the root of our project. And this is just some more boilerplate for writing to this particular database. So again, use your own version of this code. And set state. And that's it. That's all the boilerplate. So then we just have to rerun Cypress so it can pick up our new plugin. And let's go ahead and make sure that we visit the page after we've seeded the database. That way we can see the changes on the page. And we do see them there. And just to double check that this is in fact working the way we expect it to, let's update one of our seeds. And we see the changes reflected, that's great. And let's go into our database file, and we can see the changes reflected in our database. So we can see that in our test file, we're actually able to interact with and update our backend. That's pretty cool. But one problem that we are going to notice is that if we visit our actual development environment, oh no, the changes are reflected here as well. And the reason for this is because we have no separate testing environment. We're using the same db.json file in both our tests and our dev workspace. While every application will have different requirements for separating the dev and test environments, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the basics. So since we're going to have a separate version of the server running for both dev and test, we'll need to configure the port and the database file for each so we can separate them. And we can detect the node environment. And if it's test, then we will configure the port to be 3001 and the db file to be db.test.json. Otherwise, we'll just use the defaults that we've used before. And then all we have to do is go through the file 
find any place the database is used and replace that with DB file. And you can see it's hard coded in a couple places, so we just replace these. And then the same thing with the port. It's used down here, so we'll just pass in the port. And then let's go ahead and create a new file called db.test.json. And we can preset that up with an empty to do's array. Save that out. And then in our package.json, we have the scripts that we run when we actually run our project. So let's create a separate front end test environment, an API test environment. And we have to pass node env equals test, change the port to 5001 and 3001. And then when we run npm run start, which starts all of our processes, we also want it to start front end test and API test. So we'll just go ahead and copy these in. And there we go. And then our front end needs to know what the React app API URL is so that whenever we make a call to the back end, we call this URL. So we want to make sure that we have isolated the locations in our application that actually call the back end. For us, they exist in this sagas file. We have this get base URL, which knows the application base URL and returns it. So for us, we'll just say it's this React app API URL. And if it's present, we will return that. Otherwise, we'll just return this default, which was our dev environment URL. So then when we actually run npm run start, we'll see that we start up four separate processes, a front end and front end test, and an API and API test. These will all run on separate ports and using separate database files. And when these load up, we'll see that we have a test environment running on port 5001 and a dev environment running on port 5000. And clearly they have different databases here. We can say that this is the dev to do one and this has not impacted our testing environment. We can say test to do one, and these are totally isolated.